this uh, demo will focus on uh, some key points that uh, that matters matter to me um, when you start uh, customizing list forms. My name is Michael. I'm a 65 solution developer at one point. I live in a beautiful town called Nantes, which is the west part of France, and I contribute uh, to some PNP solutions such as CLI for Microsoft 365 and the PNP reusable controls. You can reach me out on Twitter, GitHub, and I also have my personal site when I share some stuff. So, list from customization. What was before? Remember, editors in the audience, what was it before? It was about customizing through InfoPath, SharePoint Designer, and for the luckiest of us, through Visual Studio. Just mentioning uh, customized list form and SharePoint should be enough to lose everyone not in the audience. But not because you don't understand, but exactly because you know what I'm talking about. Remember when you had the opportunity to crash your whole SharePoint farm with uh, just a few lines of server-side code? Anyway, good memories. So before um, SharePoint framework solutions, the package, we use to deploy we are called WSP. Yeah. It reminds us the good the good old days and also the worst. Um, because the, um, the WSP could contain a whole shop on site structure files such as lists, content types, fields that usually re usually rely to your customizations. Imagine a whole package which contains structure and code deployed at once, separated by features. No, no, no. It's not as perfect as it looks like. But anyway, when you wanted to uh, customize a, a form, you started with a custom disk form that ASPX, but also with the .aspx.cs and the .aspx.design.cs. You have the back end and the front end in the same solution. Wow. Let's imagine that you deploy the whole solution with your structure, with your customization on your SharePoint farm. And then you have your product owner that wants you to add a new field to your custom form, which means that you have to add it also to your content type as a custom field and add it to the custom form. And you have to deploy the whole new thing. So great, because randomly you could um, encounter some bad surprises. For example, the um, problem regarding synchronization and so, um, other problems uh, regarding the structure, and you have to redeploy the whole stuff, or you have to adjust it, you have to upgrade it, uh, you have to, you, 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 you are enjoying the moment right now. So this, this, this was good memories. Anyway, before the release of the version 1.15, if you wanted to give users some specific interactions with your list, you could do it through uh, web parts that you could deploy as um, app application pages. You play with query parameters, or you could also include in your solution the legacy schema.xml file, which could, which includes the um, list declaration and also properties regarding uh, the URL of the different form states, edit, new, and display form. Again, this was not supported by Microsoft, even if it was working. I remember one year or two uh, ago, a community member made a demo that was using this approach and it was, it was, it was working. Anyway, starting from 1.15, we got a new extension called Form Customizer, which works by being hosted on a specific page and for which you have to link to a content type. So that's its work. You have a specific hosting page, which is called splistform.aspx. It's the same way that uh, as the, the one you use when you deploy a web part as a Teams personal app, which is hosted in a specific page. Then you can associate the component with a list content type, document set content type, or a content type hub. Then you have some um, specific events uh, that are available through the form customizer lifecycle. The demo. The important thing here is that when you just get started customization, you only have a few things in your hands to work with your list item. And when you create your first form customizer and run it locally, you will see that the interface is really poor. 
you have quite nothing available in the interface. And it is displayed like this. Here, we have only the MG65 bar, the top navigation, or SharePoint top navigation. And this is the content of your custom form. So in terms of experience, it can be frustrating. Let's see um, how does it work currently with a list for the demo. This is based on an existing list template, which is available uh, when you create a new list. It's called the employee onboarding. As you can see, we have the SharePoint app bar. We have the common bar here. We have the, the separator, the breadcrumb. When I click on new, I got on the right panel the, 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 uh, the form, the list form available here. And when I click on an existing item, I got also the right panel display here. I can go from display to edit state. And this is, this is great. Okay. So when we saw the default interface and then the default customization here, let me show you an example of some form customizer that I already, uh, that I'm already running locally on my computer. And here we are. Okay, so except the uh, SharePoint app bar that isn't provided by the SPList form hosting page, uh, we produce the command bar, the separator, and the breadcrumb also. You can see that we I have all my fields that uh, are available. I can save, I can cancel it. And we have some um, parameters that are really important during the customization. We have first the debug manifest file here. We have the component ID. We have also the page type, which indicates the state of our form, which, uh, which is the display, display new or edit state. We have the related list, uh, relative URL we are coming from. And we have also the ID uh, because we are currently working with, uh, with a list item. So let's have a look now at the code. Here we are in the extension declaration class. Some information provided by the context that are specific to the to the form customizer. We have, for example, we have the folder info, we have the list, we have the item ID, the item, and the item is specific to the 1.16 version of uh, Shop and Framework, if I'm not mistaken. And we also have other uh, information regarding the form customizer context, such as the display mode. So like I said, we got here the information if you are in edit display on you. And based on those information, we are creating a new list item object or loading an item. Loading an item through PNPGS, we are getting all the fields that we need to, to interact with. We are saving the e tag. E tag is the unique identifier associated with a list item state, and which guarantee that if you submit it to when updating a list item, SharePoint Online will give you two responses, uh, two possibility of response. The first is, uh, okay, you got a new e tag because you update the, the item, so the e E tag has been has been updated, or the uh, the item has been updated in the meantime by someone else. So you got a concurrency uh, HTTP error code, which indicates that you have to update first your uh, item before submitting it again, in order to get the latest E tag version. Then I'm clearing some OData info that I, I don't need to, and my item is ready to be sent to my form customizer components. So in this component, a very interesting things to, to, to show. We got the command bar, the separator, the message bar, and the breadcrumb, which are available to for display to, to keep consistency with the user, the SharePoint Online user interface. We also got the on click edit item uh, method, which goes from display state to edit state by just changing the um, query parameter page type. And I don't think that there is something that there is a method provided by the form customizer context to easily let us uh, going from, from a display to another. So going through the URL search params. Um, then 
we got here on the submit save item. I'm going to just get uh, my um, item properties states to sending them to my extension declaration class. And I can also handle error during the saving process. Like for example, I said the concurrency issue when you're working with the e-tag, you can get a 412 error status code and display an appropriate message to your user or display another message depending on the error source. If we go back on the uh, extension class saving method here, I'm just uh, clearing some information regarding person fields because we are not working with this the same way when we are getting the uh, person field or and uh, updating it in order to be sent for saving. So removing this field in order to avoid an entity set error and then updating my list item or adding it here. And during the update, I'm sending also the e tag I saved before. Now notice two methods that are provided by the form customizer context, which, is, which are form saved and form closed. During when you are debugging your solution, it won't behave in the same way as when it's deployed. If I take the example of the form closed here, which is called when I'm clicking on the cancel button, as I'm in debug, I'm debugging my solution. If I click on cancel, I'm going back to my SharePoint home sites instead of the list I'm working with, which can be uh, kind of frustrating. And it's the same for the save button. So to prevent this, I've, I'm using a global variable uh, available in SPFX, which is called debug. And if I'm, I'm debug in the debug state, I'm just getting the new e tag value following my update or, adi uh, or addition and saving it so I can, so in order to perform multiple savings during my debug process. And of course, if my solution is production, I'm just referring to the form state and form close, which will both redirect to the uh, list I've linked my um, form customizer to. Okay, we saw that we got a form, a custom form with all the fields that are declared here with with all, each field, it's events uh, during changing to the state, states, et cetera, which can be heavy. There is another approach that is uh, provided by the community here. I can just, okay. Which is the dynamic form uh, coming from the pen reusable control. I'm going to update my code so to refresh also the user interface and during the, the, the rebuilding process, we're going to have a look at the, the pen control. So as you can see, there are a few properties that are required. We have the context, the list ID, the list item ID, and events regarding saving, closing an error during error method, which are provided on the submit error. Of course, I'm handling the error in K in, in, during the saving process. But I just have to mention my extension declaration class method and save and close that I showed you just before. And that's it. Going further, just have a look at the how to deploy once everything's ready. So there's no user interface to handle this, the synchronization between your components and your content type. So once your app is deployed on your uh, site collection catalog or tenant app catalog, and of course you have to install the extension on the target site, you also have to get the content type of the resource you want to associate your component to. So here, for the example, it was uh, to the default item content type to, for my list employee onboarding. And see that I have my custom form component ID, which is uh, linked to my three uh, form states, edit, new, and display. Just to sum up about the dynamic form, I wanted to point out that it's, the, uh, it's uh, an easy way for this pin, this reusable control to handle the all the fields because it's generated dynamically from the structure. And starting from this, you have access to all your form 
field and you don't have to worry about uh, if the required fields are filled or not, which brings quite comfort. But you have to, uh, you can't handle the buttons as a common bar, like I showed you before, because it's directly included in the timing form. And the other thing is that for now, the e tag isn't handled in this control. But in the next release, there will be a new property that lets you decide if you want to take the e tag in consideration or not, which is quite great. But OK, let's say that I want to link my content type. Let's hope that everything's will fine. OK, great. So now, OK, so it doesn't work, that's great. But if I just perform a refresh, and I hope that it will be fine. If I click on new, I got now my form customizer linked to my uh, list. And of course, if I click on cancel, I'm going back to my list. If I click on an existing item, I'm redirected to the display form. And if I click on edit, now, uh, now the switch is automatically made, which is great. Okay, so don't forget, just to recap. So uh, like I said, to, uh, there is this, uh, this user interface thing that is currently not provided by the SPList form, the ASPX. But I assume that in the near future, this will be replaced by the panel thing on the right, like it's natively used. So in the meantime, just consider that you have to produce some uh, key points in the user interface to keep consistency for your users. Also, make the distinction when you are debugging versus when you are deploying the solution because it's not the same behavior when you're using the redirection methods provided by the form customizer. ETAG is your friend, like I said, because it's really something uh, important I've, according to me when you are working with list forms and if you want to be sure that your users get the latest version and don't override what your colleagues are working on. And as you saw, uh, there is the possibility to link uh, different form, different extensions for different form states. But it's not because it's available that you should do it, just saying. And to finish, here are some links that will be provided in the chat. You have uh, the getting started with the, with the Microsoft Learn documentation. You have the article from which I, uh, I made this demo and also the source code, the documentation right about the dynamic form PMP reusable control. And finally, a nice video uh, made by Paolo about going further with the dynamic form because it's about overriding the fields that are automatically generated in the form. And that's it for me. Thank you for your attention. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for the, the trip down memory lane there at the with your introduction. I uh, definitely had some uh, some shell shock there.